Hi, so today I'm going to take a quick look at this. This is um, something I picked. I was picking up something from um, an eBay seller and they also had this listed, so it looked very interesting. So I had a quick look and it uh, didn't cost very much. So I thought it might be worth a, a punt. This is some sort of cosmetic laser system. Uh, there's no accessories or anything. There's not, not very much information. I couldn't find anything by looking up the um, model number online. The front's just got a screen and just a button, no keys or anything. And on the back we've got an assortment of connectors. There's two of these which I think are for the laser head of some sort, which I don't have. We've got some sort of lowish current connectors there, two high current pins here. And there's uh, three pipe connections of some sort of automatic. These are spring loaders, I think these are automatic shut off things that sort of close the valve when you unplug the thing. I think this is for cooling water in and out and there's an air, it's either a suction or an air blow. I'm not, not sure, I think it's probably suction actually for sucking out um, smoke. And there's just an assortment of other connectors looks fairly recent it's got manufacturing date of April 2021 so um, I think that's just the import information Apollo lasers um, they do seem to do quite a lot of sort of cosmetic type laser equipment so I suspect they just you know just import it um, and put their own badge on it not an HL8 but I can't find any information on that so I'm wondering if this is perhaps a, uh, a prototype or sample or something there's a few sort of screw holes in the top which looks like you know maybe some sort of um, holder for the um, the heads there's a couple there and there's some in the side that, that look like they've had self-tapping screws in them but they're no longer here so this may well be a, a unit that was scrapped or used for spares or something and so there's an assortment there's eight eight of these two pin connectors these three just sort of four five and um, six pin connectors for something or other i imagine one might be like a foot pedal or something there's another connector there but there's actually no labels or anything to tell you what these connectors are very little other other information and it mentions a uh, standard here, ISO 60825-1, which is to do with the safety of laser products. Um, I don't have a copy of that. If anyone's familiar with that standard, maybe they'll have to put it down in the comments whether they think um, what you can see from this uh, uh, actually uh, complies. So I don't have a laser head, so this is just basically a sort of power supply and control type unit. So let's see if we can deduce anything from uh, what's inside. Now, first impressions on this are far from good. I've taken the lid off. On the front, there's a connector to the front panel display and this uh, switch on the front. Now, the um, display plugs into this board, but the switch is just hard, hard connected. There's no, there's no unplug for that. They're, they're literally, it's just going to these spay connectors. So um, that's rather annoying. And the other thing which just screams sketchiness is this is the mains connector. So our two incoming mains just go to this same thin wire they're using for the DC and the earth pin isn't used at all. So uh, yeah, not great. Now yeah, I just tried powering it up but it doesn't appear to do anything. We just got a beep and just a blank screen. Nothing at all. And incidentally this uh, main, this um, front panel switch, this runs at mains voltage. And again, no earth thing or anything. So yeah, if that switch mechanically failed, then potentially the, uh, the metal bezel could uh, become live, which is uh, not great. So it looks like this, um, this switch just switches this relay to turn the mains on and off, presumably because this switch can't handle the inrush current in the power supply. And then the mains sort of goes into this power supply and also there's mains onto this board as well. So let's take a close look at these uh, boards. Right, let's see if we can figure anything out just by looking at these boards and what's connected to where. Um, this one here, this is powered by this power supply, which is 12 volts. It says it's 30 amps rated. And we've got these two thick outputs that go to the chunky pins on the um, back connector. It also connects to the um, the other pit signal pins on the connector. So looking at the, you know, the sort of size and components, I think this is probably a high current driver for a laser diode in the head. The two heads, either different wavelengths or different types of beam patterns or other things. I don't know anything about cosmetic lasers, so I don't really know what the uh, the options are. This also seems to have some controls for some pumps and valves underneath, which I'll uh, get to in a minute. So on here, we've just got like a bit of an assortment of control and power stuff. There's a load of power transistors. And a lot of these seem to be associated with these uh, diode outputs. So that's probably like a um, current, constant current output for the uh, laser diode. There's a, I think, probably communications link to this, uh, this second board back here. This connects to the display. There's a fairly low end looking uh, micro here. Uh, that's an STC um, 12C5A60S2, which is a very low end um, 8051 based micro. So this is clearly only doing sort of very basic, simple controls, nothing particularly uh, 
demanding. The display, the LCD display, looks like it's got uh, probably a system on chip on the back, so this is like a, probably a complete like user interface module. Um, there's a SD card there, so um, that, I'm guessing that's probably got something like an all-win or SOC or something in there. We'll take a look at that later. There's a fan just sort of cable tied onto the uh, the heatsink there. It's not great. It's quite a lot of opto isolators on here, but there's also quite a lot of unused connectors. So I think this is probably like a sort of modular system that can control all sorts of different types of uh, sort of cosmetic laser type things. There's sort of one, two, three, four, five, sort of six unused connectors here. Actually, there's another couple over there, and there's sort of multiples of connectors that. Uh, yeah, the, for example, these two are fan connectors and the space for another couple down there. So this is obviously a fairly general purpose board. No clues or any manufacturer information or any type information. Not much information on sort of the legends on the connectors either. Um, that one just got laser written next to it, but the other was just like C1, C2. Nothing particularly uh, meaningful. The thing they have done is siliconed all the connectors. Now, OK, I can see, you know, that makes some sense from the point of view of sort of things falling off in transit. But I mean, these are like JST VH connectors. They've got a really solid latching system. Yeah, there's no way that would ever fall out. So I really don't know why they bother siliconing them. But it's, it's quite, I see that quite often with, you know, sort of perfectly good latching connectors. They just dollop silicone on for no uh, particularly good reason. Now this fan for the heatsink is, this cable tie mounting system is sort of designed in and they've actually got slots for the cable size in the PCB but it's sort of not, not great. A little bit, a bit more detailed look, these look like, these look like they're sort of power drivers for, there's a bunch of solenoid valves that um, under this deck that these go to and obviously there's some unused, some unused ones here and just various interface things. Quite a lot of opto isolators on this connector and there's quite a few other opto, opto sort of dotted around the place. There's a relay here with some um, isolation slots around it. Which I think that's designed to be able to control mains loads, but actually this just controls a 12 volt um, air pump down, downstairs. So this has got a 12 volt in and a uh, 12 volt out. This is obviously a fairly general purpose board, so some models might have a mains operated uh, pump or other mains operated things that this could switch. Right, this board here is a bit more of a mystery. Um, there's not much connecting to it. We've got a data link to the main control board here. We've got mains in, again more sketchy, skinny little cable with mains going on it, and there's a power supply on here. Slightly better mounted fan than on the other board. Um, but the only other connections are for those three large connectors on the back panel, the ones with the different pin counts, but there's only two, actually two pins going to each one. Uh, these ones are just labelled valve, and this one is labelled 40k, so I think this is probably a driver for some sort of ultrasonic type thing for doing whatever you do with ultrasonics in the uh, cosmetics industry. Again, please, yeah, the main reason for doing this video is I'm just a bit curious about some of the details of this, so if you know anything about this stuff, please put it down in the comments. Um, with some uh, any more information, but it looks like so we've got a power supply over here again my, some, Another STC low and microcontrolling and then there's this which looks like some sort of driver stage with an output transformer So I think that's almost certainly to drive a piezoelectric um, Ultrasonic transducer of some kind um, Again, there's quite a lot of un, unused connectors here. There's one that says LCD So this is may well be uh, a board that's used for a standalone Ultrasonic machine whereas this is like an everything like lasers and ultrasonics and everything all in one box Whereas this board on its own would probably be used on a um, an ultrasonic only machine as an out, another relay for a, potentially an AC uh, marked AC pump. So again, that's probably for um, an air pump that runs off mains that can connect into there. Again, there's a couple of relays here for sort of controlling valves or whatever else. Um, not really a great deal else. Not much. There's no text or anything. No manufacturer's information, and so if any minimal text on the um, connects that one says. Uh, bio. That's about it. Right, this little board down here just really seems to be some power, that looks like a switch mode uh, power converter here, and then just a load of output drivers, and these go to those eight identical sockets on the back, so if anyone knows what might plug into those, um, please let me know, but I'm just intrigued, you know, what would plug into eight different unlabeled sockets on some sort of, sort of cosmetic machine? and just be yeah, switched. I don't know, again, I can't tell from here whether they're like on off or PWM controlled or anything, but I don't know, maybe a sort of lead array or something, I don't know, but there's yeah, eight apparently similar or identical things just being controlled under the control. This is the only other connector here. This is just 12 volt power and um, data from the main control board. This is the power supply. Looks actually, you know, I've seen a lot worse. It's got sort of thermal protection on both the case and the transformer. It's got EMC filtering, but um, the fact that the 
mains earth isn't connected to the earth pin on the power supply, I suggest that you know, the CMC performance is probably not as it should be. It does have um, these sort of uh, X capacitors to ground as part of the MC filter, so uh, at the very least this is uh, probably not great in terms of uh, EMC performance, but the actual build of the power supply itself is yeah, fairly average, so it, it does have some EMC, yeah, for the EMC filtering, so by no means the worst I've seen. So taking that top deck off, uh, we've got a few mechanical parts down here. We've got this uh, pump, which is the sort of suction pump. That then goes into this bank of four valves, which seems to be going to this sort of manifold, and there's one pipe going to each of the uh, liquid traps on the back. So that goes through these. I don't really want to think too much about what that liquid is in there, but that's whatever's getting sucked out of that uh, pipe from the uh, laser head and then they just go through to these uh, head connectors on the back and down here we've got this pretty substantial uh, pump for the cooling liquid um, there's a radiator on the back with two fans attached so this is obviously getting potentially getting rid of quite a lot of heat uh, down here there's a uh, just a filter and here there's a flow sensor obviously it needs to know that the uh, coolant's actually flowing and this black this is just a big reservoir tank and it's still fairly full of you can hear it here stuff sloshing around in there. I don't know if this is pure water or some sort of other coolant and that's that's all pretty much it. So this uh, LCD is a little bit different to what I was expecting. This is using a uh, custom chipset from a company called uh, DWIN and they sort of seem to specialise in um, sort of user interface type applications. So this is actually um, based on 8051 core but with uh, graphics accelerator hardware so yeah for systems where you just want nice fancy graphics for a user interface but don't actually need like real processing um, this is sort of optimized for that application so you've just got I think a serial interface to the um, host and then the, there's code in here specific to the application there's a parallel flash here and there's a SD card so you can also do things like play video files from from an SD card so if you've got you know, a machine and you want to use a nice flashy user interface but don't need to, all the development for a Linux based complex system this looks like um, quite a, a sort of an optimized solution for that uh, there is another system by um, I think it was really from FTDI called the FT, FT800 which is a similar thing it's just just provide what you need to do all the graphics intensive stuff without having uh, the cost of uh, lots of processing involved as well. It's quite interesting how they've got two of these looking through their um, website the larger panels have two of these chips so I presume they've got some sort of method where they can for example if they run out don't have enough video memory for the larger LCDs they can sort of combine two of them but so it's interesting to think how, they, how you actually do that you sort of split the graphics task to drive one display over two chips it's uh, with the, I suppose they could do it by just physically se um, segmenting the display, but uh, it's an interesting, uh, looks like only one of them's connected to the display, so maybe it's like some sort of yeah, master-slave type arrangement, where one sort of mostly is providing memory and a sort of data stream for the other half of the display, but uh, yeah, can't immediately find any detailed data sheets on these, um, their website's a bit of a pain to navigate, but uh, it's quite an interesting, uh, interesting solution. So nothing super interesting in here, so if I don't know what was inside I probably wouldn't have bothered with it, but it was just a, sort of the attraction of a, this uh, anonymous box for fairly cheap. I thought it was worth a, worth a punt. Um, so the main reason I did this video really just to see if I can get a bit more information about you know, what, these, what these various bits are, anyone that knows any information about these, um, these systems. But I uh, say so nothing particularly earth shattering, so it looks like this is like a modular system, so there will be that a lot of the... Uh, there's all sorts of different permutations of these boards and different heads for different um, cosmetic um, laser systems.